In my last video, I talked about gamma and the nonlinear response of the human eye. In that video, I used a random dithering method, and I applied it to the image of a toucan, but the middle colors appeared too washed out. So I applied a gamma correction to the luminance and went from this to this. But as I'm sure you've noticed, this dithering looks pretty terrible. So in this video, I'm going to talk about two simple but much smarter methods of dithering. As I mentioned last time, dithering is a way of simulating intermediate colors between the, co the colors that you do have by putting lighter and darker pixels next to each other. These pixels will naturally blur together a bit, making the image look like it has more color depth than it really does. So first, let's talk about order dithering. Here you see a piece of an image. We're starting out with a grayscale image with pixels whose values are between 0 for black and 1 for white. For this example, we're going to divide up the image into aligned 2 by 2 pixel squares. For better results, we could divide it up into 4 by 4 or even larger squares, but we're going to start with this simplest case for illustration. The next step is to convert every pixel to an integer. We're going to multiply by 4 and then round to the nearest integer. The rounding is very important. For this explanation, I'm going to call the original pixel value P and the rounded value L. Next, we're going to compare each rounded pixel value L to a matrix. So for the upper left pixel of each 2x2 two two area, we will set the output pixel to white if L is greater than 0. For the upper right, we'll set the output pixel to white if L is greater than 2. For the lower left, it'll be white if L is greater than 3. And finally, for the lower right, we'll make it white if L is greater than 1. Now you'll notice that we're treating each pixel independently. We don't really care what the upper left pixel is when we calculate the lower right. We just use a different threshold value. How does this simulate gray values? Well, you'll notice in the sample image that neighboring pixels tend to be similar in color. And we're relying on this to get the effect that we want. So, if you imagine that every 2x2 two two square is of roughly uniform color, or maybe you think about their average, then we transform the original image into a black and white dithered image made up of 2x2 two two black and white blocks like what we see on the right. Dark regions will be all black, light regions will be all white, and 50% gray areas will turn into a nice checkerboard pattern. And there are two more patterns for shades in between those. To illustrate this effect, let's first look at a gray ramp. For the dithered version, there are some zoomed in sections at the top. Here you can see why the rounding was important. When multiplying by four and converting to an integer, we could also alternatively have used ceiling or floor, but that would have skewed the patterned regions to the right or left. With rounding, it's centered, so that, for example, the colors close to 50% gray, both a little bit above and a little bit below, will map to that nice checker pattern. Now, you'll recall from my last video if, that if we don't apply gamma correction, this isn't going to look right, and indeed the middle section is rather too light. So let's replace the dithered image with one that's been gamma corrected. Before applying the dithering algorithm, I took the square root of every pixel value in the ramp. Unfortunately, this doesn't look awesome, and this is because we only have five gray levels that we can simulate. So we'll get back to this in a minute. Instead, let's look at the toucan. This has two by two order dithering applied, but with no gamma correction. And this has 2x2 two two dithering applied with gamma correction by taking the square root of every pixel value. While the dithering produces gray, level, gray levels closer to the original image, the dark areas are basically just gone. So as you can see, five gray levels just isn't enough. So this time we're going to use a 4x4 four four matrix which will yield 17 discrete gray values that we can simulate. We also divide the original image into aligned 4x4 four four squares. This time, to convert the original image to integer values, we multiply by 16 and round. 
A pixel is white if the value L is greater than the corresponding element in the matrix, black otherwise. Here's what we get when we dither the gray ramp without gamma correction, and this is what we get with gamma correction. So let's see what that does to the toucan. Without gamma correction, and with gamma correction. Next, let's take a look at an even smarter way of dithering. I'm only going to cover one that I believe is the most famous algorithm, but there are others. Floyd Steinberg is an error diffusion dithering algorithm. Since all of our output images are going to be black and white, the output pixels are going to be wrong compared to the original gray level pixels of the input image. We're going to call that discrepancy error. And to get a nice dithering result, we're going to spread out or diffuse that error into neighboring pixels in the image. Error that we spread to neighboring pixels will accumulate, affecting where we output black and white pixels. Now let's quantify that error. Let's say we have a pixel that's 20% gray. Well, the closest thing we can put in the output image is black. So if we use black, we're going to say that we have an error of positive 0.2. We're going to spread that error of 0.2 to neighboring pixels. That will accumulate as it spreads and eventually result in a white pixel somewhere. On the other hand, let's say we have a 80% gray pixel. So we output a white pixel. Since the output pixel is lighter than what we want, this will correspond to, to an error of negative 0.2, which we will spread to the neighboring pixels. If we have enough of that happen in a field of light pixels, negative error will accumulate and eventually result in a black pixel somewhere. To spread out that error, we're going to divide it up among the neighboring pixels. Usually the image is scanned top to bottom and left to right, so that as we process the image, we're going to spread the error to the right and downwards. Mathematically speaking, we're going to alter the neighboring pixels that we haven't gotten to yet making them lighter or darker to compensate for the error created by plotting only a black or white pixel at the current position. For this algorithm, 7 16 of the error will go to the right, which is the pixel that we're going to process next after this one. 3 16 will go down into the left, 5 16 will go straight down, and 1 16 will go down into the right. Now, I don't know how Floyd and Steinberg came up with these proportions, but they do produce good results. If a pixel plus the error it accumulated from its neighbors is greater than 50%, we'll put a white pixel in the output image. Otherwise, we'll make it black. Here's what we get when we dither the gray ramp without gamma correction. If you look closely in the upper left of the dithered image on the right, where I put a red box, it doesn't look quite uniform. It's a bit sort of rounded in shape. This is because the error from lots of very dark gray pixels being replaced by black pixels has to accumulate downwards before they can add up enough to give us any white pixels. I've also zoomed in on a portion of the middle of the 50% gray area so you can see how it handles that, which does produce approximately a checker pattern. And this is the ramp with gamma correction. In the upper left of the dithered image where I put this red box, you can see how lots of error from very dark gray pixels being replaced by black pixels has to accumulate a lot before we get any white pixels. And for Floyd Steinberg, now let's take a look at the toucan again. Here it is without gamma correction. And here it is with gamma correction. If you take a step back from your computer and squint your eyes, you can see the beauty of the Floyd Steinberg dithering algorithm. Now, before I go, I want to make a couple of corrections on what I showed you last time in the anti-aliasing section. First of all, I had mistyped anti-aliasing. So here I've corrected that. Secondly, last time I set the screen resolution to 1080p, but recorded at 720p. This scaling by OBS resulted in some blurring that made it hard to see the rope-like pattern that I was talking about. So this time I've set the physical resolution to 720p on the monitor that I'm recording, and hopefully you can see this better. I'll give you a moment to compare. So the left line is with only black and white with a stair step. 
The middle is without accounting for gamma, so you see the rope-like pattern, and the one on the right does the anti-aliasing in a physically linear color space so that the rope pattern essentially disappears. And that's a good place to stop.